What's up guys, this year boy, Barca boy, 103, just finished watching the match and Barcelona narrowly, and I mean narrowly, beat Osasuna's second string team, two goals to one. My god, did we need this win, especially right before the international break. We got there in the end, but it took a lot of hard work. The starting lineup for this match is on the screen right now. It was Stegen in goal, a back four Roberto, Kunde, Christensen, and Balde. Midfield three slash four of Oyo Romeu, Gunduan, De Jong, and Gavi. And a front two of Lamen Yamal and Robert Lewandowski. Chavi picking the exact same lineup like he did with, against Villarreal. But of course, Balde, who was out injured, comes in for Alonso as a direct replacement. Shocking again selection from Chavi. Sticking with this for midfield, inverted midfielder on the left hand side that left hand side was completely wide open and the Chavi's decision comes back to bite him in the butt yet again the first goal in this match was scored from a surprise source and that is Jules Koundé and it was a crucial goal just before halftime Ilkay Gundogan on the corner whips it in Koundé scores at the bottom right hand corner pinpoint perfection Barcelona scoring off a set piece as well which is very good but Koundé with a crucial crucial goal immediately before halftime the second and final goal was scored by RL9 Robert Lewandowski and of course it was from the penalty spot but keep in mind he was there for about two or three minutes with the VR check for the red card the pressure the momentum the stress all in that moment ice cold in the vein steps up sends Aitor Fernandez the wrong way and puts it down the right hand side and gives Barcelona the three points so overall, the team performance rating on the night, I'm going to be giving it a 5 out of 10. Yet again, a very, very, very poor performance from Barcelona. Yes, it's a difficult opponent, difficult away ground, but also Suna were playing their second string team like i said in the match preview yesterday also Suna played a europa league or not europa league europa conference league match qualification they lost to club bruges and coming into this match their manager rotated the entire team and yet barcelona struggled to beat also Suna's second team look i think this mainly comes down to again chavi's tactic system and style of play that he did implement in this match I think the reason why we got the three points, to be honest, was individual brilliance. Of course, Koundé, beautiful header. Then you have Frankie de Jong with his beautiful pass over the top to create the penalty for Lewandowski. It comes down to the players giving instructions that doesn't really suit the selection that the manager has chosen. So they got out there. I think, you know, as a whole, been ups and downs. But the most important thing is that we didn't play well. That's, again, it's also soon as second string side. I understand it's away from home. Very difficult stadium. Al Sadar Stadium. We've been quite, you know bumpy form there recently but now back to back 2-1 victories there i still expect a better performance in barcelona i don't care you're coming to this match a week off of course you strengthen to the, the the two jewels have come in i expect a reaction but again the most important thing was getting the win i think it was a very hard felt uh, hard fought win they had to you know you know referee was quite suspect in this match of course ver finally come in our favor that was of course our first penalty goal since march 2022 i think that memphis elche penalty the one where he puts it top right hand corner was the last penalty we scored in la liga absolute madness but i think the players today were were suffered from the system that chavi selected and i i'm quite surprised that we did walk away with the victory i thought it was gonna be a one draw especially after avella scored and again some of the defending in this match was very very poor from the team as a whole and you had to collectively uh defend there was no intensity no high intense pressure there is nothing none of that today where we like to see from barcelona when we lose the ball we press we did not do that today when we have the intensity to you know keep pushing didn't see that day whatsoever but again most important thing is getting the three points i don't want to you know emphasize that too much but that's the reason why you go on the pitch you go out there to get three points but again barcelona you expect to win and also play well i don't think we played well in any capacity whatsoever there wasn't even like a few minutes spell where we were dominating it's just barcelona building up possession in the middle of the park they go wide lose it they go to the left there's no left winger so they lose it also sooner we're coming back in the game as well they built some uh, momentum from the fans and they're also you know attacking barcelona as well so it's a very cagey up and down performance you could see from barcelona but again they got the three points you have to give them credit where it's due and again i think this is a game where the individual brilliance of the player came and saved barcelona so overall not the best of performance but got the results so i will be giving the team rating tonight a five out of ten
Let's now get into the player's individual player ratings. We'll start off, of course, the goalkeeper, Mark andre Ter Stegen, who for me tonight will be getting an average 6 out of 10. To be fair, Ter Stegen in that first half made two absolutely brilliant saves. The shot from the left-hand side that deflected off Jules Kunde, and the shot down that middle as well, where, you know, pinpoint also soon a player wide open, makes a good save. For the goal... His view was blindsided and also Avila, perfect finish, bottom right hand corner post and even to check and dove for that, it wasn't going to go in. I see a lot of people saying, oh, he stood still. I think if he dove, that wasn't, he wasn't going to save it either. The reason why I have to check his rating as quite low for a standard is because his passing today was absolutely shocking. Passing off of the back was poor, long passes were poor, controlling the passes were poor. Everything that has to do with the and building up play and, you know, his goalkeeping passing ability was shocking absolutely shocking tonight but of course made two absolutely brilliant saves that helped barcelona of course secure these three points i'll give him credit where it's due for that but his passing today was it gave me eight two vibes it was that poor not every single pass he did apart from the easy one to christensen or kunde all were all unsuccessful whatsoever and also his control of the ball as well was very poor as well so not a good day at the office for just but still made two brilliant saves so i will be giving him a six out of ten now for center back partnership in front of him firstly on the left hand side it was andreas christensen and i will be giving christensen tonight a seven out of ten thought he played very well uh made a lot of blocks in the uh final i think 20 25 minutes uh, of the second half, uh, passing out of the back was completely fine from him. He read the game very well, uh, you know, spread out the play when needs be, was positioned very well, good ground tackles, good aerial threats as well. I think it was a typical solid performance from Christensen. And again, those blocks in the last 10 minutes were also were on top of us, especially after the penalty goal from Lewandowski were absolutely crucial before Indigo Martinez came in. He was very, very important in that second half, but for first half, it was very solid from him. I think typical Christian performance, nothing he did was absolutely out of the ordinary or extraordinary. I think it was a very solid performance and again, had to highlight his few blocks that he did have preventing those Osasuna uh, shots on target. But of course, his center back partner was, of course, Jules Kunde, and I've gone on a limb here and I'm giving my first perfect 10 out of 10 this season for Kunde, and of course that does mean he does get my man the match. I think Kunde today was flawless. On top of him being flawless, he also got the goal. I think his aerial duels tonight was so monumentally important. He won every single aerial duel. The last second block he had as well for the shot, I believe it was from Budimir before Osuna had their corner and they you know, threw it wide and then the game ended, was crucial. Everything that was getting in behind Kunde, he was stopping. This man right now on current form is the best center back in the world without a shadow of a doubt. No one comes close to him right now on current form. Absolutely brilliant. I could not, I couldn't, I was going to give him a nine. I'm like, why should I give him a nine? I, he didn't do anything wrong today. He was absolutely world class. On top of that, gets a goal as well that gives Barcelona the lead before halftime. My center back was absolutely brilliant tonight and he gets a 10 out of 10 and my man of the match. Into the fullbacks now, firstly, Sergio Roberto at right back, El Capitano. I'm giving him a very generous 5 out of 10. I mean, he was absolutely poor, was not making any overlapping runs whatsoever. I don't know if that's down to him not doing it or down to Xavi's uh, decision, his tactic to tell him not to do that, but was not making any overlapping runs whatsoever, was leaving Lamen Yamal in 2v1 situations constantly. Defending was poor as well, was getting stuck in behind a lot down that left-hand side. And of course, he had that little bounce where he miscontrolled it and put it out for a throw-in when he was by himself, isolated. I mean, you can tell he's just washed. And the sooner he gets out of this team, the better. Uh, I think God can sell come in. Hopefully, that means Roberto will go on the bench. Again, Roberto's at a level of, you know, uh, like an Elche or like a Mallorca at home. He can maybe do a job. But these tough away games or tough Champions League games or tough top-tier level games like this one, he ain't up to scratch anymore. I'm sure he's going to leave the club at the end of the season. But absolutely poor from him again. That's back-to-back -back poor performances. Of course, last week was just detrimentally poor. This week was just regular poor. So you could say there's some improvement from a 1 to a 5. But still not great from him. And I will be giving him a 5 out of 10. Next up at left back was, of course, Alejandro Balde. I will give Alejandro Balde a 6 out of 10. Thought he was alright today. Poor guy is just by himself on that whole entire left-hand flank. He had to cover the left wing position and the left back position all by himself. He's kind of, he's kind of, you know, doing his role with two legs behind, tied behind his back. So it's difficult for him. I think he played all right, defended pretty well for Alejandro Ball's perspective. I think he's really, you know, uh, increasing his level as a uh, defensive uh, fullback. Uh, going forward today, it wasn't the greatest for him. He did have uh, some good runs here and there. His crossing wasn't there either. But I think I'm giving him that six more so for his defensive output today than offensive. He's making a lot of good runs whenever it was being fouled, whether it was Gavi giving him a poor pass, Dion's pass was cut out or going to ones too much. But I think, you know, 
in his position, he did what he had to do. So I would be giving Gallo tonight a 6 out of 10. Into the midfield now, firstly in the pivot, Oriel Romeu. I'll be giving Romeu tonight a 7 out of 10. Thought he played very well again. I think what he does at his role, he did exponentially well today. Whether, you know, it was uh, retrieving the ball, uh, detaining the tempo, making those runs, commanding the team as well. He gave away the ball a few times today and again, some of his uh, decisions wasn't up to scratch that we've seen in the preseason also in the uh, Juan Gamper and the first match against Getafe. I think his decision making isn't really quite there yet. Still trying to get used to his new teammates but I think again in his position he's absolutely fantastic. The interceptions, the tackling, the reading of the game, him spraying the balls out from the back as well connecting the play from the defense to the attack. I think he did very well. Dropped off a bit in the second half around 10 minutes before he got subbed off but I mean, that's what comes with age. I think, you know, he's done very, very well since he came to Barcelona. I think, again, yet another, yet another great performance from him. And I will be giving him a 7 out of 10. Next up, of course, on the left-hand side of the midfield, it was Frankie de Jong. And I will be giving Frankie de Jong a 9 out of 10. I mean, he was La Liga's man of the match. He wasn't quite my man of the match, but he was absolutely brilliant tonight. I mean, I'm starting to realize that if we didn't have Kunde and de Jong... We'd be sitting in the relegation zone right now. I mean, we would genuinely would be down in the relegation zone right now on the live La Liga table if it wasn't for Kunde and Frankie de Jong. They've both been absolutely world class these first few matches in La Liga, and today de Jong was no exception. He was absolutely all over the place. I didn't give him a 10 because some of his passing wasn't, you know, not up the scratch, but it wasn't that final ball that we did need of course had that beautiful pass for Lewandowski that earned us the penalty but there were some moments where Lemon Yamal was, th was through if he put the right pass in or whether it was ball day and some of his passing wasn't really too accurate the ones that were a bit more difficult to uh, successfully complete but again his coverage of the field his tackling tracking back moving forward his spins Brilliant, brilliant from Frankie de Jong today, and he will be getting a 9 out of 10 from me. And the final midfielder, of course, the right-hand side, it was Ilkay Gundogan. I will be giving Gundogan a 7 out of 10 today. I thought he played very well, but I think his performance comes down to his output in the final third, which wasn't that great today, but also really wasn't his fault. Players are looking for a pass, players not retrieving the pass correctly, but I think Gundogan was, you know... He wasn't as creative as you expect him to be, especially in the absence of Pedri, but he still had some creative aspects of him today. Of course, he was very, very active first half an hour. We saw him a lot very upset with Xavi because he's putting him, uh, the players are not really reading his game and also not making the runs they should be making. We're going to want to see the run. They don't make it. He gets upset. He got upset a lot today on the pitch, uh, El Kai, and rightfully so. The players are not, you know, making those runs that need be or not connecting with his uh, passes as well. But I think Gunduan still played very, very well. I think defensively helped more than I expected him to do. And overall, I would be giving him a very solid 7 out of 10. Into the forwards now, firstly Gavi at the left wing, left forward, left mid, wherever you want to call that position. I'm going to give Gavi tonight a 6 out of 10. Thought he played okay. I think he dropped off a lot in that final 20 minutes, but I think in the first hour he was very uh, did very well. Of course, had to get staples in his ears halfway through the match as well. Shows how much of an absolute warrior he is. I think his, again... Some of his touches and, you know, decision making isn't that great at the moment. He's holding onto the ball too long. I think what he does off the ball is brilliant. The movement he does in behind, the intensity that he shows, uh, creating spaces for his uh, teammates. I think just on the ball, his level hasn't been at the Gabby level that I expect from him. I think he's had some, he had some good dribbles in this match, but some of his passing and final uh, decisions and outputs were the greatest. But also, we have to highlight that Gabby did play his 100th match for Barcelona. I mean... <laughs> How, in two seasons in a bit, he's played 100 games. That is absolutely astonishing at his age as well. 19. Crazy. Crazy. So congrats to him. Put an all right shift today, and I will be giving him a 6 out of 10. Next up, of course, is the striker RL9, Robert Lewandowski. I will give Lewa tonight a very generous 6 out of 10. I think if he didn't score the penalty, we're looking at a 5, maybe at a 4. I think he wasn't that great tonight either. I think... It's just, he looks so dead. I mean, his... I think, again, like he said in his interview midweek, he suffers from not having other attackers with him because he has to drop back, create himself, get in the box. I mean, when Balde and Lamen Yamal are running down those flanks and they're about to put a cross in, Lewandowski is nowhere to be found because he dropped back to try and create and try to help out the team, you know, push the ball forward. So I think he suffers a lot with not being able to play with two wingers. That's why I think if Chavi wants to play with these four midfielders, he should probably deploy maybe Rafinha or Ferran 
or maybe even Joao Felix alongside Lemen Yamal because I think Lewandowski really suffers in that system. Of course, got the penalties, the credit where it's due with the pressure, with the stress that was on him. He put it in the back of the net and gave Barcelona three points. Gotta give credit where it's due, but I think his performance tonight was probably a five, maybe a four, but overall, I will give Lewandowski a six out of ten. And last but not the least, of course, the 16-year-old starting his third consecutive match, Lamen Yamal. I will give Lamen Yamal again, like the other two forwards, a 6 out of 10. Didn't really get into the game. I think his position uh, was uh, not really down to him, but down to Chavi, because again, he did not have an overlapping fullback the whole entire match. They kind of suffered through that. Had some nice turns, some nice movement. Didn't really see him take any dribbles or, you know, use his pace to his advantage. I think his link-up play was actually surprisingly good with the likes of Gundogan. Frankie de Jong and, and Roberto, the one time I think he went forward and made a run into the box. But again, I think he was really isolated down that right-hand side because, again, there's no one down the left. So the, uh, the, also, the players overload that right-hand side and that kind of nullified Lemanyamal's Yamal's game. But I still think he was okay. I think he had some good moments, but not as much as we saw in the match against uh, Villarreal when the pitch and the players are much more open. But overall, for Lemanyamal, Yamal, I think he was all right, and I will be giving him a 6 out of 10. Now, for the substitutions, where, of course, there were three debutants tonight for Barcelona. The subs were Juan. Juan Cancelo, Ferran Torres, Joao Felix, Rafinha, and Indigo Martinez. None of them really had an impact on the match. Of course, Cancelo had that great Travella cross. Uh, Felix made a good pass in behind. Ferran Torres was making some good dummy runs and making some uh, movements. I think Rafinha put in a cross and a, and a corner kick and that was it. Indigo Martinez had a couple of clearances. The subs, I think, were correct from Xavi, but the timing of them was very poor. I think Joao Felix and Fran Torres should have came on about 10 minutes earlier. Felix should have came on early. I think if Felix came on early, he could have maybe stop that goal from Avila. Uh, Indigo Martinez, I think he came on the right time to give Christian a little bit of a break. And Rafinha was just, you know, an extra man to add in, in the attack. But again, these plays are very impactful off the bench and hopefully... The majority of them will be, end up uh, becoming starters once we come back from the international break. But overall, no, none of them really had a big impact that kind of came on. Provide some fresh leg, different outlook, different inputs. I'll probably give them all an average 6 out of 10. And last but not the least is, of course, the manager, Xavi Hernandez, who I believe for the first time ever is getting a rating of a 1 out of 10 from me. Absolutely piss poor from Xavi tonight. The only thing I can really give him credit for is using all five substitutions, which we know is very rare, rare, rare for Chavi, but fucking hell, man. Keeping the same lineup, same dead tactics against a weakened Osasuna side. Again, I cannot stress this enough. This is Osasuna's second string team. All the reserve players, because their first team was out trying to play, trying to qualify for Europe in an intense match against Club Bruges. And we still struggled. We put our, our first team, our best team, which I think isn't our best team in terms of system and style and personnel week off and we struggled and Chavi did not adapt anything in the match he had good to one trying to shout at him trying to tell him to change stuff or trying to tell him like the players are not listening this isn't working and it just sucks to see Chavi so inactive on the touchline finally he's back on the touchline after two matches in game management again from Chavi absolutely shocking beyond belief and I think if we draw this match I think everyone would be attacking Chavi way more we had to realize that we were about five minutes away from dropping points in this match which would have been absolutely catastrophic chavi i'm praying now with a week or two with training these players no no matches he can open his mind and realize that this four midfield formation only works against the top teams your arsenals you man cities united chelsea juventus bayern psg when you're playing also soon as second same team and you're trying to control the tempo of the midfield and by the way you're doing that absolutely poorly that midfield four is not going to work. That left side was so vacant, I could have sat there and drank a cup of tea and nothing would have came to me. It was ridiculous. Poor Alejandro Balde is covering that whole entire left-hand side of the pitch by himself. And you wonder why he picks up discomforts. He's going to pick up some more injuries as well. The man is running the whole entire length of that left-hand side. No help, no elbow whatsoever. I promise you, this team can cook if you play a traditional 4-3-3 and have an actual forward in Gavi's position. I feel like now he's just playing him at that point to keep everyone happy because of course Gundogan wants to be a starter, De Jong wants to be a starter, Gavi wants to be a starter. I think he's just trying to play all three of them to please them essentially. Like it's so detrimentally poor that we can be such a better team but Xavi is just being very stubborn and very conservative with his selections. I mean it's piss poor from him and he's very lucky that we won this match. If he didn't I'd be going in uh, way harder than I should be right now but all we can do is hope and pray that he changes. Because I tell you what, Betis, when we come back, I'm going to start for uh, Betis probably. If we do not select the right team, the right personnel, and the right formation, it's going to be 
hell for Chavi. I'm already seeing people saying Chavi out. People already the fact that when this lineup came out and everyone was doubting his lineup on you know social media says enough. No one agrees with this selection. Everyone's saying to play a winger, but he doesn't want to. And when everyone he everyone thinks that he should do, and he's the only one thinking he's not doing it, it doesn't bode well for him whatsoever. So if he can change. Again, I think it's going to be huge for him that selection against Betis. If he picks his fucking goddamn four midfield again, he's going to get absolutely cooked. But it is what it is. I, tonight, I'm going to give Chavi a 1 out of 10 for absolutely everything. Team lap selection, performance, in-game management, and even could say his substitutions in terms of timing. So that was a match review for Osasuna versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discuss but the main thing i want to first say of course is your thoughts on the performance your player ratings and your manager rating as well and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time on the channel take care and force a barca <laughs>